DC. DC TV. Unfortunately, our office is Thank you for contacting the administrative offices of DC TV. Please listen to the following options as our prompts have changed. To leave a message for Beth Bushy, office manager, press 1. Hafiz Kazem, vice president of administration and CFO, press 2. Thank you for contacting the Public Access Corporation of DC, DC TV. If you know the extension of the person you are trying to reach, you may enter it at any time. Please listen carefully to the following prompt in our menu. For the staff directory, press 1. Contact us. Karen Beasley, 116. Regina Brennan, 117. Beth Bushy, 101. Brandon Selton, 115. Thomas Gonzalez, 104. Hafiz Kazem, 103. Jamar Jefferson, 123. Mark Leak, 122. Jackie Reardon, 114. Yusef Platine, 106. Miko Taylor, 113. Bob Thomas, 119. Gina Bontress, 121. Jasmine White, 105. At least that young man went down Route 9 with $10 in his hand that he didn't have before he stopped in. Yep. Yeah, that can make me feel good. But I should have done more for him. Five hundred and forty-eight, three hundred and nineteen, one hundred and sixty-three, one hundred and seventeen. And 107. Box calls are done. So all that goes into Sunday calls.
So I'm gonna go tend to Friday. Brian Erskine. Give him until next Sunday. Hey Lynn, it's Glendora. I continue my monologue with you. Someday maybe it'll be a dialogue. The annual meeting was held today. They did have a quorum. And it was a good annual meeting. Uh, the uh, finances, of course, there's more spent than comes in. Uh, and a couple of people are off of the consistory. Alan Field didn't stay, but the new couple uh, the uh, son, I guess it is, and daughter of the Noahs with their new little baby who was baptized and became members, they stayed. Uh, Dora Smith, uh, who was a friend of Jean Leminger, is at the moment uh, passing into heaven. Uh, it's cancer. And uh, let's see. Uh, uh, we had a very nice luncheon. Uh, Bonnie Pooh was there, and Dorothy German wasn't. Uh, Barbara Mooney wasn't. She she is, does not feel good. Uh, Dick was there. Uh, Doris. Uh, oh, McKeever, Mrs. McKeever wasn't there. She didn't feel good. Um, but the choir held its own. And I asked them at the annual meeting, what was the response to the letter that they sent out asking for money? Answer, absolutely nothing. Neither yes nor no, or neither praise nor criticism. So I guess I'll send them $100. I'll be the only one to send them anything. Uh, okay. Uh, the temperature today. Maximum time permitted for recording your message. If you are... You're doing fine. Mary Grace, get her telephone number. Mary Grace. 
What's it going to go under? G. Mary Grace. Do anybody you know that made it with God? Oh, let me get that out of your way. I guess we can forget her. She didn't show up today. With God we go to spend the joy of life. We give each day the happiness of love. We count our blessings. We give thanks. We give joy. Stop, stop the cruel. Stop, stop, stop the cruel. Meppin. Meppin. They used to live here. I think that's an amazing round, around 360 degrees. Oh yeah, Owen. It's Glendora. Hi. How hey. Are you? Oh, 100%. How are you? I'm surviving. <laughs> any, any, any good news? Anything better? Anything? Never anything better? A pain less or anything? Well, yeah. Sounds like. this a few hours and then it's back or it comes and goes. Yeah, at this very moment, I know uh, a church mate who's dying of cancer at this very moment. Oh. They've done all they can. The morphine doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Isn't it awful? So, and I, I got something else to tell you. I was at the Seventh-day Church yesterday in Kinderhook, and uh, I was waiting for the Raphael. It was, it was about 3 o'clock. I was waiting for the Raphaels to give me a ride home. And let's see, Paul and uh, Dorothy Fitz were there. Do you know them? No, I don't They're, know anyone in Canada. Okay, they've been seven-day Adventists for centuries. And uh, uh, Esther was there, the mother of the little baby and the two boys. Uh -huh. and, and Maude Celestin was there. And uh, uh, Maritza was there, our pianist. Okay, so I'm sitting there waiting, and it's uh, it's snowy, it's Route 9, and we're a long white building, and a man came in the door. And he said, how far is it to, he picked out me, out of all the people, he picked me out, and he says, how far is it to Hudson? And I said, well, it's three miles to Valencia, and then it's five miles to Kinderhook, and then it's eight miles to Hudson, so it's about 14, 16 miles. He says, how long does it take to walk it? I says, well, a person can walk a mile in 20 minutes. And he says, I came from Castleton, 
That's the town above, uh, right above Kinnahook. And he says, I'm uh, going down there. He says, I'm going down there to see an apartment. And I think he said, I'm homeless. And then he said, thank you. And he left out the door. Well, I'm staggered. And I don't think. And then all of a sudden it comes to me, come on, wake up, Glendora. And I ran out the door. I knew that I had 14 or $13 in my pocket. And I said, yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo, come back, come back, come back. By this time he was on Route 9. All snow, you know. And then he came back and I handed him the $10. And he said, thank you. And he turned and, and left. Now he didn't ask for money. He didn't want to tell his story. He didn't want to take the time. And I was so mad at myself, because there was so much more we could have done for him. You know, somebody could have given him a ride, or we could have at least said, well, sit down and tell us your story. And also, they had given me a plate of food, uh, zucchini or something. Not zucchini, uh, ziti. And uh, I really didn't want it. i just take it home and give it to the animals. I should have given him that whole plate of food. I'm so disappointed in myself that I didn't help him more. Yeah, well, that's, I was waiting for you to say, and he was asking for help, but cause usually they'll, they'll call up our church and say, you know, they're stranded or this or that, and get this big stop story, and what can you do for me? And, and, uh, and then they go to the next church and do the same thing. So we, we, we kind of are leery of that. Um, but he did. Yeah. But he didn't. He didn't ask for anything. No. So uh, I, you know, I should have said one thing. I should have said, "Well, sit down, get warm, and tell us your story." And we all should have done that. And the others didn't say a word about it. Not a word. Even when I came back with with the, from giving him the ten dollars, nobody said anything. I I don't know. I'm bewildered by the whole thing. But at least I know this, Charlotte. He walked down Route 9 in the snow with $10 in his pocket. Right. So you helped him. Well, I did, but I'm so mad at myself I didn't help him more. Yeah, well, we, we, we get that way, and then we say, oh, why didn't I think of saying this? I know. <laughs> I know yeah, it. I've done I, that. Yeah, I know it, honey. Oh, well. That's the story, anyhow. How... What's going on today? Is Tim home? No, he was called in to work. Oh yeah, and what's Beth doing? Well, she just got back from a late training uh, weekend, so... Oh, bless her heart. Where? Uh, Auburn, New York. Oh, in Auburn? Yeah. I'm trying to think where that is, Auburn, New York. Is up near Rochester? Uh, yeah. No, near Syracuse. Near Syracuse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, Charlotte, I think you sound better. Huh? I think you sound better. Yeah, it's just, it's starting. It's just, I gotta deal with it. And I just, you know, I called the doctor's office and asked, you know, if they heard anything from the insurance and they said they want to review it some more. Oh, yeah, wouldn't you know? Alright, so I'm like, so, uh, so. Well, well, what else can you do? What can you do? Nothing. You can Nothing, no. No. Except it's talk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just talk to God, that's all. Right. Did no, I tell yeah. you, did I tell you about the man and the aptitude test? I don't think you have. That's a good one if I didn't tell you. you sure, I might have told you. Well, anyway, the man comes home from work and he's tired and his wife says, what's the matter, dear? He said, they gave us aptitude tests at work, and I flunked. And she says, oh, it's dreadful. He says, yes, it's a good thing I own the company. <laughs> <laughs> and let's, didn't tell you that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Here's another one. Uh, why do geese fly south in the wintertime? <laughs> yes, uh, they fly south in the winter time because it's too far to walk. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Too. yeah, that one's that one's good too. And why does the mother call her son 
Hallie's Comet because he only comes around once every 75 years. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, two women are walking down the street and they see a sign in a men's shop window. Sale on men's shirts for men's with 16 to 17 necks. And the woman said to her friend, that's too many necks for a man to have. <laughs> and the last one is a, a mother left her 10-year-old girl with two elderly ladies while well, the mother went to, and did a five-minute errand. And as the two old ladies are sitting there in the room with a little girl, one lady says to the other, she's not very P-R-E-T-T-Y, is she? And the little girl says, no, but very S-M-A-R-T. <laughs> okay, hon, you got your list here? Let's go over your list, one of them. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Oh yeah, I think it's uh, one roll of lamb and one. One roll of lamb is smoked turkey. Oh, I did not. Did I say smoke? Okay, you're right. Thank you. You don't <laughs> I have. Don't have any lamb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have your list, and you're right. Okay, one smoked turkey. All righty, and one uh, roast. And two fried chick, one big franks, two stripples, one Swiss steak, one tender rounds. Yeah. And the other fried chick that rolled on. Yeah, yeah, the, the forgotten fried chick. What will we forget this time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. We always forget something. <laughs> Well, that's good. You gave me all the news, honey. Is there anything I can do for you? I'll just continue to pray. That's yeah, that's right. That's the last. My prayer today is, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yes. Blessed are the pure in heart, very for they shall see God. Going home. What, dear? And so soon, very soon, we can go home. No, I don't follow you, hon. Well, Jesus is coming soon. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, sure. You know, at the uh, Seventh Day Church in Kinderhook, starting February fifteenth, that'll be next Saturday, won't it? They are having a uh, their sermons at eleven thirty, and they're inviting all the public and people to bring their friends. It's all about saving a marriage. Well, how sacred a marriage is and what a marriage teaches you and how it matures you and all the good things about being married. And it's going to go for six weeks. That's going to be it. For six weeks, the uh, sermons are going to be all about marriage. Sabbath school was very good uh, yesterday. Very good. I stayed home yesterday. You did, yeah. Uh -huh. But you were well enough, it's just that you didn't want people to ask you things, huh? Uh, well, no, I was hurting, but I just, yeah, I just sitting there for, well, if, if you could do, like, bring me for church, instead of Sabbath school and church, um, but you can't because of the different people you Oh, yeah, I see. And Beth couldn't help you? She was not. So that's was right. She's at the conference, yeah. And that's why. And then I closed the door today. I didn't have it open today. Oh, I see. Second Sunday of the month is usually open, but Tim was called into work. And, you know, that's more than important than me. I was sitting there for an hour and a half and had nobody show. Yes, of course. Well, but sure. Well, sure, I, I think you. Yeah, no, no, I think you're doing fine. Don't criticize yourself. Yeah. Okay, sweet. No. I called you yesterday, you know, and there was no answer. Um, Tim was on the phone. Was no, no, it wasn't busy. There was just no answer. You, no. It was some, 
Sometime in the morning. Sometime in the morning. You, you don't get a busy single? No. Single? No, it just rang and rang and rang. So I says, okay, I'll call her tomorrow. That's because it, uh, it when somebody's on the phone and somebody else tries in, you don't get it. Uh, are you getting a lot of customers for the heat alternative? No, because I haven't, we haven't been able to get any heat alternatives for the heat alternative. Tim's been busy and I haven't been doing that and he's, he's, we, we haven't been doing it. We need to get some more people, but. What is the deal? Huh? What is the deal? Well, the deal. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Of your supply part of it. Uh-huh. Um, Is it National Grid then, that you have on? Yeah, uh -huh. National Grid. And everything stays the same if you try it, and then at least 1%, which isn't a whole lot, but it's something. And then uh, at the end of the year, if, if it's been, you know, they you say more, if they... They make sure that you've got the right amount. Uh, National Grid went up a lot. My, uh, yes, mine was, uh, you know what my apartment is, you've been in it. That was uh, 190, uh, 195, yeah, 195 last month. 195? Yes. Are you on a budget plan? No. Oh. And one ninety five for a for a. I pay, we pay one sixty six on a budget plan oh. all year round. They're paying one sixty six to National but, Grid or to this new place. Uh, everything gets paid to National Grid, and then they have to work it out with the ambit. Oh. You don't you don't have to change who you pay or anything. It's just that they are the supplier of the. Uh, gas or the, the electric, whatever. Yeah, mine is all electric. I have nothing but electric. Ah. Well, my heat and all the love heat and stove, the water. Service Commission is no good at all. Public Service Commission is supposed to protect us. Thank you. 
face and they try to survive, right? Mm. That's why it's been, um, you know, people have, the, the uh, deregulation came in. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I guess we covered everybody, didn't we? <laughs> I think so. All right. <laughs> All right. Keep up the good work, sweet. All right. I'll we'll talk to you later. Yeah, I'll call, I'll call you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, dear. Bye-bye. Now, do you do the TV stations? No. Sunday you won't get any. So are the tel is the telephoning done? Then you go to the details. Okay, buenos dias, señora. Buenos dias, senor. It's Glendora. Call me when you can. The Reverend Anton told a true story and a funny story that this woman was out shoveling snow at St. Mary's. And a man walked by, never offered to help. Another man walked by, never offered to help her. Third man walked by, never offered to help her. And pretty soon all three men came back with shovels. <laughs> Take care.
five, four, three, two, one. Hi folks, Ginny Palmer is taking care of a lady who is 104 years old. And I believe uh, this lady is having her 105th birthday this month, and it might be this week. And she's doing fine. This uh, woman was outside of the church, and she was shoveling snow. And a man went by, and he didn't stop to help her. And a second man went by, and he didn't stop to help her. And a third man went by, and he didn't stop to help her. And a little bit of time went by, and then all three of them came back with shovels. <laughs> and their sermon in church was very, very long. And a man got up and left the church. And then he came back. And at the end of the sermon, the priest said, Well, Clarence, I noticed you left the church during the sermon, and then you came back. Where did you go? And he says, I went to get a haircut. And the priest says, well, Why didn't you get the haircut before church? And Clarence said, I didn't need it. I didn't need it then. These uh, stories were told to us by the Reverend Antone at St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church in Nassau, New York. This is 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. circa is God Meditate Him in Prayer Time and Count the Blessings for Yesterday. This is a new joy book. What is a joy book? A joy book lists the things that have happened and it lists the things that must be done and that all adds up to blessings because the things that have happened are blessings and the things that are to be done are blessings to dispense. Pretty, isn't it? Isn't that a pretty color? What is that? Is it lime? Avocado? Kelly green? Pea green? But this is not where you do God meditate him in prayer and list the blessings of yesterday. That's another book. Precious, precious book. All right, folks. What shall we meditate about? Let's meditate about the New Testament, the Bible, the chapter the Gospel of Matthew. And let's go to Matthew chapter 5. And let's go to verse 8. And that's, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want to see God. I want to see you, God. I want to see you all the time. The more I see of you, the better. So, in order to see you, God, I have to be pure in heart. And I think approximately that maybe I am. Because I don't have any hate in this heart. How about you, Dotcom? Dotcom doesn't either. She purrs. Purrs and purrs and purrs and does the love fingers. So this is, this is seeing God. 
and I'm with you, together. The hate is out of the heart, and we see God. All right, God, meditate, him, prayer, on February the 10th, 2014, Anno Domini, Monday, at 835A. Talk to the TV audience about Blessed are what the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Oh, the Beatitudes are so beautiful. Folks, I was at the Seventh Day Church Saturday, the day before yesterday. And I was waiting for my ride to go home with the Raphael family, and Esther Raphael was there, and six-month-old Abigail Raphael was there. The two boys were playing somewhere. Uh, Daddy Raphael was uh, mopping up the floor, doing good as always. And there was Dorothy and Paul Fitz, F-I-T-T-S. And over here was Dr. Maud Celestin, and she was talking to Maritza. Maritza is also a P, they're both doctors. Uh, Maritza is a PhD in language education. She teaches Spanish at Union College in Schenectady. So I'm sitting there waiting to go home and the door opens and in comes a young man, all bundled up and he went by the other people and he picked me out and he said to me, how far is it to Hudson? And I said, well, it's three miles to the traffic circle and it's five miles to Valencia. No, I said it's three miles to the traffic circle, it's five miles to Kinderhook, and then it's about eight miles to Hudson. It would be about 14 to 18 miles. And he says, how long does it take to walk it? And he had been walking. He had been walking down Route 9, the very famous Albany Post Road. It goes from Manhattan to Albany, the post office road of years ago. How long does it take to walk it? I said, well, a person can walk a mile in 20 minutes. And he says, I came from Castleton, and that would be uh, the next town up after Kinderhook, Skodak, Castleton, all on Route 9. And he said, I'm going to Hudson, there's an apartment, a rent down there. And I think he said, I'm homeless. I think that's what he said. And I believe I said to him, can you hitchhike? And I believe he said to me, nobody stopped for me. And then he turned around, said thank you, and went out the door. I am astounded. I am in shock. And then, wake up! I ran out the door, I ran outside in all that snow, nine inches of snow. By now he had almost reached the end of the driveway and going down Route 9. And I said, yoo-hoo! 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 Come back! Come back! I had in my pocket, I think, 13 or 14 dollars. And I gave him the 10. And he came back, and he took the 10, and he said thank you, and he turned on his way. I went back and I sat down. And I was so disgusted with myself. I could have done so much more for him. I could have said, sit down, get warm. What's more, we have a luncheon, a vegetarian luncheon every Saturday, fellowship meal. 
and there had been a plate of ziti left over. And they always ask me, well, do you want it? Because I give it to the animals. I, I don't eat it. I could have given him that plate of food. I could have asked Mr. and Mrs. Fitz if they would take him down as far as 9-H, because they go as far as the traffic circle. I know that Dr. Maud Celestin lives in Valencia. I could have asked her to take him to Valencia. It's interesting that the other people do not respond to him any. Uh, I guess they didn't catch on what was going on. What would you have done? Glendora, when that kind of thing happens again, and it does seem to happen often, you say, well, sit down, tell me your story, and listen to it, and try to find out what is at the depth of it. Okay. God, meditate him in prayer about the young man walking on wild winter snow route nine. No help. Well anyway, this is true. He was walking down Route 9 at least with $10 in his pocket. February 9th, 2014, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, Sunday, Sabbath. Blessings. Annual meeting, Nassau Reformed Church, luncheon, mostly vegetarian. I didn't see any animals cut up. Uh, no response to the letter. seeking funds. But Jesus said in Matthew 7, asking you will receive, seeking you will find, and knock you will, it will be opened unto you. And here is the letter. And what's the date on it? January 2nd. So at the annual meeting, among other things, the very sad finances, yet they still keep going. They're a very small group. There's only 22 givers. And by the way, it listed between 100 and 500 how many givers there were, and between 500 and 1,000 how many givers there were. <coughs> Excuse me. And yet they, they, they go on. They continue to exist. They had to have a quorum of 17, and they did. Our new treasurer, Lori Clark, who gets paid $900 a year to do the, who is a member of the uh, Roman Catholic Church, uh, she wasn't there, and that was a big loss. A loss for her, a loss for us. So anyway, I said, what was the response to this letter? Nothing. No yes, no no, no good, no bad. So I will send him a hundred dollars. And I sent yesterday, or I should have sent, but I won't. I messed it up. I'll do it today. A hundred dollars to compassion over killing to help the animals, compassion over killing animals, slaughtering them. 
How do, they're so sweet and they're so smart and they're so lovable. How can we do such things? And a hundred and fifty dollars a day before to Mercy for Animals, who are out making people vegans, returning people to their vegan nature, which they never should have left, and a hundred and fifty dollars to American Vegan Society. What do you think about starting a vegan club at the library? The library director thought it was a good idea. How would I go about that? And then also today we'll send a hundred dollars to farm animals rights movement. Okay, counting the blessings of yesterday. Uh, sunshine. Snow number 19, one half inch. Every four, three, four or five days, God waters the earth. God makes sure there's water on the earth and air on the earth and soil on the earth, the continents, North America, South America, Antarctica, Australia, Asia, Europe, Arctic. We have continents and then we have oceans. We have land, we have water, and we have air. And the scientists say that God has done this for five billion years, kept this earth going, building it. The operation of it is a thrill. It's a thrill. The earth rolls around and sees the sun again in the morning and it's dawn. And at 5.30 now, the earth rolls away from the sun and we have twilight and nighttime. The air is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen and 1% other gases. And the World Encyclopedia said, you can live without food four weeks, you can live without water one week, but you can't live without air more than four minutes. You hear that, Doctor? God makes the sun shine on the just and the unjust. The rain on the good and on the bad. Waiting for us to get smart. Just get smart. Stop the complaining. Do nothing but appreciate. Count your blessings. Count 40 blessings every hour. Okay, what other blessings tomorrow? Yesterday. St. Mary's, 10 o'clock Mass. All the work up to date. Yes, all the work is up to date, and, it, and it's up to date most days. I had to walk on Route 20 because the sidewalks were not shoveled. Route 20 is a very interesting route. It goes from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, from Boston to the end of Oregon. It would be nice, wouldn't it, to go on a trip all through Route 20, all through the little tiny towns like Nassau Village of 1,100 people. But no, I don't want to go anywhere but right here. Right in the village of Nassau is enough for me. And Dotcom doesn't even want to leave the house. She's so content with her house. And your rent is paid for Dotcom for four months. January, February, March, and April. Rent doesn't have to be paid until May. That's a good deal. We get $50 off a month by doing that. Okay, what other blessings yesterday? Sunshine. Sun. The nuclear furnace. Making all of those elements out of hydrogen. I kind of think that all of the elements are just combinations of hydrogen. Two hydrogen is helium. 
three hydrogen is what? Four hydrogen, five hydrogen, six hydrogen, eight hydrogen is oxygen, is it? What's nitrogen? No, oxygen is, yeah, I guess it is eight. Carbon is 12, right? Nitrogen is 16, 14. We should have a list of elements. All right, all the elements. What else happened? Oh, Austin answered the phone. <laughs> you don't know what a miracle that is. For three weeks, he hasn't answered the phone. For three weeks, you call him, and he says, my phone must be off. He's had that message on there for three years that I know. Never changes the message. And uh, I leave a message, and I'll call you back when I can. And then message box is full. It's been that way for three years. He's totally Stone Age when it comes to telephony. He doesn't answer the phone. He doesn't return calls. But yesterday, Sunday, he answered the phone. And we went over the things that have to be done for a chat with Glendora. I asked him to go by. I asked him to make eight shows for the District of Columbia where Karen Beasley is determined that the program's not going to play. Nitpick, nitpick, nitpick. She worked so hard to find something wrong with the show. And it's all illegal because there's only three reasons you can't play a public access show. Nudity, indecency, and what's the other one? Oh, it'll come to me sometime. And a chat with Glendora has none of those, of course. But she continues to violate Title 47, the United States Code, Section 521 at Sequitur. No cable operator or public access administrator can exercise editorial control over public access, except for those three things that are not constitutionally protected. So I asked him, Oh, and the latest thing is, oh no, we didn't receive the last four shows. Oh no, we didn't receive the last four shows in the mail. That's eight. And that's hard to believe, because the post office would return them. Uh, so what's the answer? Just keep sending down more shows. So I asked Austin to do eight DC TVs. I cannot do them, because between... Uh, the end of the show and the disclaimer that this show was requested to be cable cast by George McDermott, who is fully responsible for its content. Between the time that I make a DVD of the show and put on that disclaimer, there's a tiny two seconds of glitch, and she rejects the show because there's two seconds of black. But Austin can do that on his computer. I do it on DVD recorder. So that's why Austin has to do them. So I asked him to do eight. And I asked him that when he went back to college, Northeastern University in Boston. I asked him to do that as of January 6th epiphany. Three weeks have gone by, or four, in January, and one week in February, and he hasn't done them. He can't get out off the campus and go find, buy eight DVD discs. So, it falls on me to send him eight DVD discs. I thought I had them here to show you, but no, they're in the mailbox for the mailman to pick up. Thank you, post office, so much for many, many things, for delivering the mail and for picking it up like that. So I did that. Plus, return address to me because he sent them to DCTV back four or five months ago and he put the wrong address on them. They came back to his house. He's in college. His mother just puts it aside and it waits until he gets home in the summertime. So, 
I put in three dollar stamps to me and my address and to mail them back to me so that I will have to pay another three dollars to mail them to DC TV but that at least we'll know that it happened and it didn't sit at Austin's house for two or three months. Okay, Austin answered the phone. Uh, the universe. I spell universe Y-O-U. N-I-V-E-R-S-E. Got it. You, the universe. Born. Okay, folks. Alive, healthy, food, these are all your blessings too. Clothing, and a home, freedom, and independence. No catastrophes, yesterday.com. No robberies, no house on fire. No blizzard, no flood, no tornado, no earthquake. Uh, didn't fall down and break your leg, no heart attack, no aneurysm, no stroke. Freedom and independence, no catastrophes. You're able to take your, care of yourself, get up in the morning, take care of yourself. Put yourself to bed at night, feed yourself. The finances, education, the schooling we get. My friend Pat Nichols is teaching a young man to read. And he's, he's a young man. I mean, he's like in his teens or 20s. And she's teaching him to read through literacy volunteers. She goes to the East Green Bush Library and they have a special room for that. The East Greenbush Library is magnificent. Magnificent. What a library. Oh, what a library. I just can't describe it to you. I ought to go over and video it for you. And so she goes over there 